lies about how the marital money is spent, the financials, the assets, what a family owns because maybe they incur debt, or what a person makes at their place of employment, that's called financial infidelity. A person is deliberately hiding information about the inflows and the outflows when it comes to your financial past, present, and future. And that's a recipe for a disaster. When a person suspects their spouse is doing this, they call Donna Lascala. Donna is president of Comprehensive Divorce Solutions. She is also a CDFA, which is Certified Divorce Financial Analyst, a financial neutral, and an RFC, which is a registered financial consultant. Her job is to help clients survive and thrive when it comes to the monetary component of a divorce. Donna, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Well, and thank you for being here. And I want to jump right into this. What are the red flags that a spouse is committing financial infidelity? So the first thing you want to look for is if there are massive changes in your financial situation with bank accounts, mutual fund accounts, um, brokerage accounts, if suddenly things are looking very different, if the statements are coming in and all of a sudden the account numbers are changed for some reason or the title of the account is changed for some reason, if there are a lot of cash transactions coming out of savings, if there are charges on your um, American Express card, uh, your joint Bank of America card, that you can't quite figure out what they're for and why they're there. That's something that is the first red flag that you want to be aware of. The problem that a lot of people have is if they are not the person that's been in charge of the money from the very beginning of the relationship, it's harder for them to know if there is a change in behavior in the finances. You know, one thing I was doing when I was researching for this segment is I also found something called financial fraud. What is the difference between financial fraud and financial infidelity? So financial infidelity is much more common, unfortunately, than we think. And it really has to do with hiding money, hiding assets, not really telling your spouse exactly what's going on, having authoritarian control over the money. Those things are come under the category of financial infidelity. But when you're talking about financial fraud, as with any definition of the word fraud, there has to be some hint of illegal activity. And that's one of the reasons why, as a CDFA or someone who is a forensic accountant, would want backup documentation for at least three to five years for all of the accounts that you have so they can see the pattern of behavior and the money flowing in and out. If there's suddenly a lot of money movement and there are a lot of cash transactions, that could be a sign of financial fraud. And remember, the fraud really points to illegal activity. If someone is gambling, if someone is doing drugs, if someone is money laundering, if someone is doing illegal things in the brokerage account, they're trading on insider information. Those are all fraudulent types of behavior, very different than just financial infidelity, which is control, secret, hiding, money and assets. You just made reference to backup information. What is it and why is it vital for people to learn about if they have to prove this? So backup documentation can be a couple of different things. You know, we all used to be in the age where everything was paper. So you got a paper statement, your bank statement came, and it actually had copies of the checks that you had written as they were, you know, cashed in and the check was actually there. Well, it's not that way anymore. So everything is electronic, but you can still get access to that information. So the backup documentation, copies of statements, copies of transactions, um, bank, brokerage, mutual fund, 401k, all of those things that you have as far as assets, your mortgage statement, 
That's why people in my line of work or forensic accountants or any other financial professional that's working with someone going through a divorce is going to ask for at least three years, sometimes five years worth of statements for every single asset or debt that you have, because that way you can start to put together a paper trail and you can see a pattern of behavior. So going back to the statement of if things start to look odd, unusual, out of character, that's how you can see it. If you build that paper trail and then you start to see something just doesn't look right because something's not in that established pattern of behavior, and that puts up a red flag immediately. You talked about court, and I know that in your line of work, sometimes you have to go to court on behalf of a client. Given your experience, do the courts look differently at financial fraud and financial infidelity if it's brought into a divorce action? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, you know, the thing about financial fraud is that it's very clear cut and it is a legal issue. Financial infidelity is a little bit harder to prove and to prosecute because, like I said, it could be wrong, it could be unethical, but it might not be illegal. But let's just take a look at that for for a second. You know, everybody talks about, you know, well, what if the person is having an affair? What if the husband is having an affair and he's spending, you know, tens of thousands of dollars a year taking his girlfriend on lavish vacations and is saying that he can't afford to pay child support? Well, that's definitely something that if proven and if you can show the paper trail, the court would not look favorably upon. Because if the person is making a statement saying, well, I can't afford to pay this much in spousal maintenance and I can't afford to pay this much in child support, well, then how are you affording to take these trips and these vacations and these lavish dinners and all of this kind of stuff that's come out because of the paper trail, because of the backup documentation, we can see what's going on. We do a lifestyle analysis. Something's not right. So in that case, the court would not look favorably upon the financial infidelity because the person was making a claim that they couldn't afford to do what they were supposed to be doing as far as maintenance and and child support. In other circumstances, you know, it's, it's very hard these days for the courts to get involved in things that they don't have a clear-cut picture of or responsibility for dealing with. You know, once we turned into a no-fault state, it changed the way things were looked at as far as financial infidelity or infidelity in, in, in every sense of the word. It's no longer something that the court really wants to deal with. So it depends on the circumstances. Well, one thing I know we all want is we want people to call you to learn more about this very important topic. Donna, how do they do that? They can reach me at my office, 516-218-6919. Donna La Scala, president of Comprehensive Divorce Solutions. So, so, so important. I can't thank you enough. And one, everybody should continue to learn a lot more of. And I highly recommend Donna to do it. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this commercial break. At Comprehensive Divorce Solutions, Donna E. La Scala provides the tools for people to deal with assets, debts, equitable distribution, and retirement in divorce negotiations. We hold your hand during and after the divorce process, providing a roadmap of what happens next and into the future. Divorce is difficult whether you're initiating it or not. It's fraught with emotion. When you deal with emotions, you are not dealing with logic, making it more difficult to decide what to do with your money. Hiring a professional to assist you in walking down the money path is crucial to avoiding potentially costly mistakes. 
Donna's goal is to make sure that each individual knows how they are going to be able to survive and thrive during and after divorce. As a CDFA trained mediator and collaborative financial neutral, Donna helps people get unstuck and move forward towards their post-divorce future. Call Donna E. La Scala at 516-218-6919. 516-218-6919.